Now, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi is a man who wears many hats. Former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, former Emmy of Kanu, adding political activists to the list may not be too far-fetched. The hallmark of a public intellectual is consistency. Somebody who doesn't talk from two sides of the mouth and is not bothered whether a narrative favors him or not. Sanusi Lamido Sanusi is one of such persons who do not need to like or hate him to enjoy his essays because they breathe life of their own, separate from the man who is who in the past two decades has remained an issue in national discourse. In his new book titled For the Good of the Nation, Essays and Perspectives, Mr. Sanusi brings together over 35 essays addressing a myriad of issues ranging from politics, polity, Islam, identity, history, and nationhood. The publisher of the book, Tunde Fagbinli, joins me now. He is also the founder and chairman of uh, Foundation for Values and Normative Change. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Good morning. Thank you. You know, going through the book, I was intrigued by his line of thought and the way he addressed a lot of issues um, from the book. And uh, it would be interesting to delve in and begin from the very start, mm. the introduction. <coughs> some parts were, you know, uh, touched on by Pius Adesami. He did some things, the late Pius Adesami. Yes. And uh, we also see <coughs> his very good friend, Nasir Arufai, also contributing to the book. Yeah. You might want to touch on some of these uh, things that um, especially Pius Adesami said uh, with regards to the book, and then talk on El Rufai as well. Well, yes, thank you so much. Um, Interestingly, the book has been in the works for about 10 years. I was going to go to that. Incredible. Mm. 10 uh, years? Yes. Um, it started from when it was governor of Central Bank. Mm. The, what struck me then, of course, my column was still running mm. in the national papers. Uh, um, and so I had encountered his writings, and I was very curious. I mean, it's very unusual that you find somebody in the economics, in the financial world, um, you know, with such in radical views right. that were all published in various newspapers in Nigeria and even abroad. So I, uh, so I took interest in him and mm. I started exploring his writings. And the more I read about him, the more exciting it became on various issues. I mean, in, in, from Islam to politics to philosophy. Who is this man? Hmm. <laughs> He's supposed to be governor of Central Bank. So I sent him an email and uh, said, uh, like, I took him on, on an issue because there was an email group where I also found his name. I belonged to that group. And I thought, What's he find? what does he want on this group? And he was also participating. I might not have the time for this. Right. So I, I sent him a message and uh, he replied me and said, yeah, well, we can look into it. I said, I think my company would like to publish his book. books, because these are worth being in libraries mm. in, in universities and colleges all over. And he said, okay, we can start looking into it. So my company, Alpha Communications, began working on it. Um, and he also now gave me a link into sources his of- archives. Yeah, right, his archives. Uh, and uh, the more we s I searched, the more I found. <laughs> and uh, so it got very interesting. Mm. And uh, and uh, so that was how I began, you know. I never knew him, I, didn't, nev I never met him. But, you know, of course, he may have been re reading my columns, I'm mm. not sure, but anyway, that's how we got together. And uh, so there's, then, of course, he got removed as governor of Central Bank, mm. not long after we began. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and so the book um, was in abeyance, you know, it didn't, we didn't go into it. And then uh, it became MR. Mm. And in all the time of MR, he didn't have time for it either. Because the volume was huge. Mm. Twice this volume, in incidentally. We had to really f cut, you know, uh, edit a lot out, uh, remove some of the um, essays in order to come to this manageable volume. Um, so, but the important thing is that uh, at this summit, we got. May so rest in peace, you know. Um, I picked on him to write the introduction to the mm. book, and he took time off. He was in Canada, if At you the time, know, yes. in the university, and he took time off his uh, schedule.
to really sit down on the work and his treatise, his introduction is a treatise on his own, mm -hmm. about 15, 16 pages of what is on me is in here. So that's a collector's piece. Yes. More or less one of the last work he did. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's an intellectual work, a treatise, the introduction, tells you everything about Sanusi, about the book, from an intellectual perspective. perspective. Um, so he had completed that work. Um, before the ill-fated uh, crash, crash that uh, took his life very mm. sadly mm. Um, and so if for nothing else i'm proud because he's my friend mm. you, you know was and still is if for nothing else i think uh, his honor. yes this book is worth handling mm. <laughs> for pyros adesami if nothing else but pyros adesami did a great job in his introduction and anything that I need to say, that I could say about the book, because not about, you know, Pius' introduction is what I will have to extract from. Mm. And um, uh, Nasser uh, Erufai, who is uh, the friend to uh, the Sanusi, Lamido Sanusi, yes. he's new, he said that, he said something that, you know, it's obvious uh, that um, the person of uh, Lamido Sanusi was obviously angered by the Nigerian in uh, situation, mm. and this sport, the expose, was found in his articles and even the interviews yes. that uh, we have seen. Yes, and he, I mean, you know, he didn't spare anyone. No, no. I mean, so that's the, that's the curious thing about uh, SLS, as as they call him, before yeah. he became MA. Um, you know, and uh, now I. Be, uh, goes with the name Mohammed as well, but uh, Sanusi Lamido, Sanusi, Sanusi yes. SLS is what is known by all over the world. Is it, that's the curious thing about him. This is royalty, as he never misses his words in letting every, the whole world know. Uh, royalty, who is now also a rebel. And in, in <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, it, it's an intellectual, it's in, like, like uh, Pio says the, the, the book is the book. It says it is autobiography, history, politics, political economy, mm. identity, and the sociography of nationhood. Mm. It is the story of Lamido Sanusi's checkered route to manhood. And he says, you know, he says a lot of other things. But yeah. he says, and, but importantly, he also described uh, Sanusi as a philosopher king mm. and public intellectual. Yes. And a rebel. <laughs> it says. Um, and you have you to know, mention that. Yes, a rebel, because it says, uh, really, it says, hardly has royalty ever gone to the trenches, mm. literally and metaphorically, to speak truth to power. Absolutely. While mapping a career in public intellection. Mm. Uh, it says this is the first fundamental sense in which uh, Sanusi is a rebel. You know, is is there? Is it's, it's like he's committing class suicide. Yes. <laughs> I mean, somebody is within that class of reality, that class of elitism, mm -hmm. and yet, you know, is not sparing that class. In fact, th like, th yeah. there's there's something I want to pick from the book that he wrote, just to. Oh, give but sorry, talk about Rufai. Because no. that was actually no, your yes, point. We'll, yes, we'll come um, back yeah, to him. Okay. Uh, there's something just to give an impression of what we're trying to say yes. about this book uh, that he didn't spare anyone. No, uh, if sorry. you look at uh, one of the pages, page 18, particularly, yeah. he was touching on issues that borders on restructuring the religion yeah. and all of it. And he, he quoted the Quran, Hajj yeah. chapter 22, 40. And he says, it forbids explicitly tearing down monasteries, churches, synagogues, and mosques. Yet the leaders of Muslims have not come out strongly enough to condemn this violation of the rights of Christians, nor consider the implication of Christians in turn, burning churches, uh, burning mosques mm -hmm. in, in retaliation. It is also worthy of note that Christian morality does not approve of alcoholism and prostitution. Talking about there was a law that came at the time to destroy alcohol yeah. and brothels yeah. and all of it. And he, though he was just speaking the truth. It's absolutely, it's, it's amazing. Um, and, you know, the thing is that I, I, you, if you read him, and most of the work there actually is on Islam and religion, it yes. bring, it, 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 what he's exposing is to let you know there's a difference between tradition and culture and religion. Right. And so people who are mixing it up are either being mischievous or using it for their own personal ends. And he was not sparing the imams, he's not sparing anybody. And so if there's a, there's a Yoruba from where I come, and um, which says, you know, 
uh, there is a masquerade mm -hmm. in my in my town. You can speak Yoruba. Yeah, my. <laughs> <laughs> you know, make it easier. There is a masquerade. There is a masquerade in my town, Igbajo, yeah. in yeah. Osho State. Right. Um, when it was maybe in the in the ancient times, yeah. so I'm not sure they would do that now. Before before it goes out. You know, if he wears, he comes out, he comes out once a year. But before he comes out, he has to first kill his eldest son. Really? Oh, yes. That's part of the qualification to be able to wear that mask. It's the most feared masquerade. And so they will say, Iyekiye. The name of the masquerade is Iyekiye. Iyekiye Omoeni La Kongba. You first kill your child. Now, you tell me, somebody who has killed his own child. Now, is it, is it, who, who can't he kill out there? So when he goes into, <laughs> when he goes out, everybody is scared. Everybody runs away because oh. they know it, will, it doesn't. He can't spare anybody. The same thing like he says SLS. Um, he doesn't spare anybody. So somebody who can deal with his own religious leaders and imams and everybody. So when he's now talking against the, some Christian pastors or something or some southern Yoruba or whatever other ethnic groups, you will understand that he's not doing it because he hates that group. It's because he's trying to speak truth to power. Because mm. he does the same thing even about his own northern people. Yes, and All right? you got a backlash. A absolutely. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what, uh, that's what the MS, uh, the, reigning, the ones who are still there will say, well, mm. he, right. spoke, he spoke truth to power and it, got, it keeps getting the backlash. The backlash. <laughs> you wanted to talk about uh, Nasser Erufai's perspective to the book. Yes, he, he, he wrote the foreword. Yes. You know, and of course, we know we are, um, it's public knowledge that they, they are twin brothers. I call them twin, twin brothers. brothers. They, are, they are friends, <laughs> so, you know, kindred spirit. Um, yes, you know, so uh, Nasser wrote the foreword before he became governor, of mm -hmm. course. They're, like I said, this book has been in the works for 10 years. Oh, yes. So, yeah, all, almost everything there was ready. All we were just waiting for is the time to uh, to make to go public with it. But it's a book like the power says. Um, we all have an obligation, you know, to the nation, to Nigeria, to read this book. Mm. Um, that was the concluding part of Pios. And uh, the, my, as a publisher, my interest. I'm not. I'm not here to sell Sanusi right. <laughs> and it's, or go to go into politics or whatever. It's to you know, show the, the merit in this book mm. and to ensure that the universities, you know, with the dissemination of knowledge, because there's a lot of intellectual effusion in this volume. And, and that brings me to the next question, uh, which is a major issue that has been yeah. going on, uh, even with recent developments. Uh, that has to do with restructuring. Yes. He, he discussed uh, I in the book. He says uh, he, he, it was... He controversially waded into the matter of restructuring. And when you look at his position, mm. I'm wondering if you think it is progressive and if it is the way to go. Well, you know, um, it's, it's difficult to fault, to fault his argument. Mm. And what he's saying is that, you know, ethnicity and religion has be, is being used by politicians yeah. or to divide and for their own you know, for their own uh, personal ends. Right. And that, you know, restructuring and all these other, you know, isms um, are only good to the extent that the leadership, you know, um, is, is we, have, uh, we have good leadership and that mm. the problem with the country is that of leadership. Mm. And there are probably empirical evidences that will back him up in terms of what leaders who we have not been too fortunate on, you know, in Nigeria to have a spell of good leadership. Right. And so his own thrust of argument is that leadership is the issue. And once we have a great, great leader, all the other problems will probably be start resolved. Yeah, being resolved. Yeah. Just, just to mention, to pick uh, an excerpt from the book, he says, yeah. the tragedy of Nigeria does not lie in its diversity, nor in its population, nor in its resources. A tragedy lies in the lack of a truly nationalist and visionary leadership, yeah, yeah. an elite that harnesses and uh, harnesses the diverse streams that flow into the melting pot called Nigeria. Nigeria yeah. And he says that the elites in different parts of the country, like chameleons, mm. <laughs> change their color and their ideology yeah. when he sits there. Absolutely. And uh, the, the, uh, the reviewer of the book, Professor Wa Adebanwi, you know, who, is, who was in Oxford, 
Oxford University as the Rhodes Scholar and has just left for Pennsylvania as the professor of African studies there. He wrote in, uh, in his review, he says, one of the most significant goals of this book uh, is how to ensure national survival. It says, while the reader may not agree with the author about his diagnosis or prognosis, mm. I suspect that most people across the political and ideological spectrum who are committed to national survival, including both the proponents and opponents of restructuring or national conference, will agree with the part of the book which speaks powerfully to the spirit of this book mm. for the good of the nation. All right. It says, um, I will quote the author, and I started quoting SLS. There is a second, perhaps more fundamental reason uh, for discussing the structure of the Federation. It is the reality that the elite merely exploit or manipulate the secondary contradictions in our polity. Mm -hmm. They neither created nor concocted them. The historical process which brought together these heterogeneous groups was never destined to achieve a magical and immediate erosion of their histories right. and a total submersion of their identities into a common national milieu. Right. The task of nation building does not lie in ignoring these differences, as the military have tried to do. Unity is not necessarily synonymous with uniformity, but it also does not lie in a defeatist attitude of despair or a return to a nihilist era of ethnic agendas and tribal warfare. Right. The tragedy of Nigeria does not lie in its diversity, nor in its population, mm -hmm. nor in its resources. Our tragedy lies in the lack of a truly nationalist and visionary leadership. Leader, which is an leadership. elite that annexes the, the diverse, diverse streams. That, that oh, you have it there that, with you? Yeah, Absolutely. That was what I quoted yes. earlier. So, so now let's look at the issue uh, because of want of time. Now, this book is said to be perhaps a wake up call for yes. a rebirth of the nation. Of the nation. And are you confident that with books like this, we can achieve the desired change that we look forward to? Well, it's every, every little helps, as, one, as some advert uh, abroad says of, uh, <laughs> I think it's Tesco. Every little helps. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a collective thing. We, everybody in their own ways, in their own little corner, should contribute wisdom, knowledge in, try in this process of trying to create a national rebirth. Um, you know, what is very clear is that the politicians, as we have them, um, are, have not given us much hope. And what's important is for intellectuals uh, and, and people who are honest about nation building to continue to, you know, uh, explore avenues and to throw in the path forward. And that's the thing about SLS. It doesn't just, um, you know, criticize. It's not just uh, pontificating. It also propounds, you know, the way forward. Right. So yes. I think every little is important. The books like this and columnists, you know, and your television stations, are every, the media, importantly, we all have a role to play. Mm -hmm. And we have to continue to drum it and figure out to change values. We have to figure out uh, my foundation, as you've as you heard, is that of normative, you know, uh, values and normative change. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, how, do, how, do we, how do we reorientate the mind of the people yeah. such that they can ex reject the politicians who come and want to divide them, mm -hmm. and at the end they get there and they don't have any idea of the way forward. Right. So knowledge is critical. Dissemination of knowledge is very important, and what, that's what this book stands to do. Mm -hmm. And so having it in homes and libraries is very important. You know, that's, uh, so for someone who wants to get the book, where can they get it quickly? It's all over. In um, most, most credible bookshops all over the country, right. have them um, in, in, all the con in all, the, all the towns, all the major towns. Right. Um, the book is available on bookstores now. All right. Yeah. Okay, we'll leave the conversation here now. Thank you so much, uh, Tunde Fagbinli, for your time on the program. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it. Thanks. All right.